Hey guys, it's Damien from Marketing Food Online. Uh, this video is actually going to answer in three parts. Um, I've had a lot of requests and questions about the following topic that I have written up here in Scribble behind me. Um, I'm going to actually be covering organic labeling. There is a lot of confusion as to what you can and cannot put on labels for food products just in general, but it gets to be kind of super tricky uh, when it comes to organic labeling. And there are certain certifications that you must have in place uh, via the USDA, that it would be the United States Department of Agriculture, um, to make sure that those products uh, contain ingredients that are actually organic or they're derived from organic ingredients to a certain percentage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to break this down into three videos uh, because it's going to be relatively long if I did it in just one video, as well as the topic specifically. I'm going to cover four, four specific topics. I'm going to go over them, all this information I have behind me. Um, I don't want to make you go to sleep while you're watching my video. That is not the objective. So I'm going to try to break this up into like about 10 minutes and then do another video. I'm going to do it in three separate videos so I can cover this information and be really as detailed as I can and to the point. As you know, um, I like to make my videos short and sweet. I don't jump up and down and put on costumes for you and take up your time. So let me get right into it. Um, organic labeling. Okay, so the question is, if I want to create an organic product and I have suppliers who are giving me organic products, um, what kind of certifications do you have to have? Uh, if you're the end producer of bringing those ingredients together, do you have to have a certain type of labeling? How do I do that? Et cetera, et cetera. So this is going to be super informative. I'm going to go over it right now. Number one, USDA certified organic products have strict uh, product and labeling requirements. Um, unlike most mass-produced products that are not organic or do not have health claims, you got to also understand really quick, I'm going to step aside from the organic labeling for one second. If you're trying to make a product and you are claiming a health benefit, you have to have that product analyzed. And that is a whole other video and a whole other series of videos. Um, but you cannot make certain health claims um, because it will uh, actually have to be backed up with some type of research or a breakdown of the ingredients and the product itself on a uh, scientific level, if you will, um, to be proven that those health claims are backed by something, okay? So uh, those are something that you want to stay away from, and I'll do another video series on that specifically because uh, in a lot of products that people make health claims, um, you have to be sure, you gotta be, it's really tricky, you got to be careful how you word it, okay? So. In order for your product to be, uh, uh, be able to have the label that says certified organic, you have to have it go through a process. You have to have it certified by a division of the USDA. Um, and it's actually here, the industry, the organic industry is regulated by NOP, uh, by NOPE. It's called National Organic Program, and it is a branch of the USDA. Okay, so the US, the US Department of uh, Agriculture actually um, has a branch specifically set up uh, within itself to regulate and review organic products. So when you're labeling and when you want to put that organic, certified organic logo on there, you really can't unless it is following these guidelines. And again, after these four, the second video I'm going to do, I'm going to break down specifically what they're going to look for and how they actually regulate it and the more specific details on it. Okay, so. Well, when it comes to um, specific labeling um, for product production and labeling requirements, it is a much strict and a much more regulated uh, industry uh, because of the fact that there are so many um, GMOs, genetically modified organisms that are circulating in fruits and vegetables, um, pesticides, chemicals, and the way that the actual pr produce and veggies uh, and fruits are produced and how they are not exposed to those other elements, that's what contributes to it being certified or not certified organic, okay? So you gotta be super, super careful about who you're sourcing them from. If you're bringing together ingredients and you're producing a end product, um, if you're wanting it to fall in these guidelines, you're going to need to request some information and documentation um, that is going to prove that those ingredients that sellers, a producer of, of vegetables and produce that's selling you uh, organic products, they need to prove that, okay, to make sure that that is fully organic and they are either regulated or they've got certifications from the Department of Agriculture stating that the process that they are using, okay, to create the vegetable or produce that is being put into your product, 
that the process itself is organic. There are no pesticides. There are um, every, elements outside of the growth of the product within the soil are protected and it's kept away from GMOs or anything that's genetically modified, okay? So it is a little bit more detailed, it's a little more involved than producing a regular product, I guess you want to say, a regular product, but something that's not organic. Uh, there's a little bit more, a few more hoops that you have to jump through, but it's not something that is not possible, it's not something that's impossible, it's just going to take time to do it, but the great thing is, is once you've done it and you've got all your certifications and everything checked off, you've got a very unique product and you've got product that is uh, in high demand, okay? In general right now, anything organic, um, it's just, it, it's unbelievable how the industry has skyrocketed probably, I, I would say about 15, 17 years or so, has been become this enormous, enormous industry, okay? So it makes it well worth having to go through the process, finish it, do it, see it to the end, and then once your product is done and it's got your label and you can put the certification on, you're good as gold, okay? Um, and the industry as a, as a whole is not going to stop growing anytime soon. It, if anything, it's going to continue to grow even more because consumers are becoming more educated and more understanding about the quality of organic products, not just organic vegetables in your produce department, but products that are being made organically. Everything from flour to sugar, pretty much any ingredient uh, can, can pretty much be produced in an organic manner that can make a much healthier food product, okay? So, uh, designed to allow only natural substance on organic farming prohibiting synthetics. So kind of like what I just touched on, why this, this type of program was designed uh, was that it would help eliminate synthetic ingredients, um, anything from ar man-made artificial and not only ingredients but pesticides and chemicals which could get into the soil which inadvertently does actually get into produce and vegetables. Um, either it goes through the actual growth of the plant or the product or it is sprayed on the outside of it. So anything that is synthetic um, would basically disqualify uh, any product that would be trying to get certification under the organic uh, guidelines, okay? So, and again, it's set up to allow only natural substances. And the way that the, uh, the USDA actually does that is that they've got tests that they can run to pick up on trace elements, um, uh, whether it be some type of pesticide, uh, artificial uh, growth hormone of some kind that could actually be put into uh, the plants or the soil itself, um, and GMO, of course, genetically modified organisms, which are hugely used in commercial production of produce and vegetables. So they'll check those, they'll check out uh, the, the product itself. If it happens to be, you wanna make an organic uh, pepper, uh, jelly pepper um, that's made with bell peppers or something spicy, you know, you wanna check out to make sure every ingredient that's being put into that, including the peppers itself, uh, they would examine that from the farm that is trying to get certification for organic to make sure that there are no elements uh, that are artificial or man-made, okay? So, now the, the last thing I wanted to cover in this video, uh, one, like I said, one of three, this video I wanted to cover, there's four types of labeling categories. 100% organic, so not only do you have a specific type of labeling if you're going for certification for an organic product, but there's actually four types, okay? 100% organic, organic plain, just organic without it being 100%, uh, specific organic ingredients, and then made, made organics, made with organics. So the first one obviously is pretty, like a no, pretty much a no-brainer. It's 100% organic. Um, every single ingredient that has been put together and brings, a brings together a final product that's being produced that wants to claim organic or you want to claim 100% organic, that is, um, I don't want to say it's more strict, but it's something that, they w that would be tested and scrutinized pretty rigorously uh, to make sure that everything that is actually put into the final product is grown naturally and within the guidelines of organic food production, okay? Specific organic ingredients would be that it is made from products that are specifically uh, organic. I don't want to sound redundant, but... Uh, specifically organic so what it would do would bring together <clears throat> okay sorry about that <clears throat> had a little bit of a camera glitch so if it states that it would be you wanted to fall fall under the made with organics it would mean that for instance if you had a claim on a label that said made with organic corn every ingredient within that final product that has any corn related ingredients has to be organic okay so what I'm going to do is um, 
I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna break down the rest of this process in the next couple of videos because I'm over 10 minutes already. <clears throat> so I will be more specific and show you exactly what will be expected if you're going under these different claims. But again, if you create a product and some of your or product, some of your ingredients are actually organic, um, I will get into a, a video and show you specifically that in some cases, depending upon the uh, quantity or the percentage of organic ingredients used in the final product, you can make a claim about it being organic, okay? So I hope these first four, just to get started, I hope these first four will kind of lay a foundation so you understand that there is a expectation by the USDA. There are regulations and there is a department set up specifically to regulate and make sure that the ingredients being used in a product that is labeled organic that it actually falls within the criteria, okay? So you can't just kind of randomly slap on a label. Um, if you've got um, a large percentage of your product, vegetables or, or produce, or not vegetables or fruit, um, just randomly labeling it organic when maybe the majority of what you're actually using is not organic and it does contain pesticides or something artificial or synthetic, you don't wanna do that. So I hope that helped you out. If my video did, please, as always, give me a thumbs up. If you have questions about what I just stated, please do let me know down below. Um, if you're actually, I'd be really interested to know if you're actually in the process of making an organic product or a healthy, a healthy food product, let me know what that is uh, down below in the description. Uh, you can, we can kind of help, help each other out and get our subscribers to uh, go over that if that's something that you know, we can ask each other about. And of course, anything that you want to ask me about in much more detail, if you're looking for some consulting, again, do double check uh, Marketing Food Online 2. That would be my second channel. I do have that available and that actually has uh, email consulting where you can actually ask me questions specifically and I will get back with you within 48 hours. Um, and I can help you with any stage of product development that you're looking for. Um, and that's Marketing Food Online 2. That channel is $12.99 a month. <clears throat> um, and that includes additional resources on the channel, but mainly the focus is uh, having the ability to get the consulting from me one-on-one. -on -one. So thank you guys for your time. I hope you appreciate the video. Thanks.